talk about these patch notes. They're inc uh, incredible. Once human, patch notes, 1.1. I don't know, like, how that is not capitalized. <laughs> it's a title, right? Shouldn't that be capitalized? Anyway. Patch uh, happens tonight. So, if you're on Pacific, it's happening. But guess what? New animal ranching is here. And this is actually something I really, never really thought about. This is kind of interesting. It makes a lot of sense why this would be added to the game. Animal ranching. Brand new animal ranching features now available. Capture and raise and build your post-apocalyptic ra apocalyptic ranch. Apocalyptic ranch? Like for like a salad? Amazing. Get that in my mouth hole immediately. Uh, most animals encountered in the open world, including deer, wolves, sheep, wild boar, bears, rabbits, and crocodiles can be captured and brought back to your territory to be raised. Even, even more animals will be made available in the future. That's pretty cool. I didn't expect that. Uh, crocodiles. Maybe interior crocodile alligator? I don't know. Each animal has different habits and characteristics. You must build special housing for each type of animal and provide in the appropriate food. Once an animal is tame enough, you'll be able to collect skin and meat from them. I think you would probably have to kill them for that meat. I don't know. Uh, some animals are aggressive by nature and can help you defend your territory against deviant invasions. That's pretty cool. A little animal... Uh, animal... Uh, I don't know. Attack brigade? For your, for your uh, purification cycle. There you go, Livid. Scan through the notes. I kind of scan through them. I'm, we're going through them right now, line by line. And we'll, talk, we'll talk about them. I'll, I'll throw my two cents in there too. This animal ranching thing, I don't think I'll go super in-depth with this. This is cool. Uh, and it says, in an upcoming September update... You'll even uh, will be allowed to breed animals to obtain rare and unique critters. That's cool. This is a cool system. I think people would like this. Um, revamped the fishing system. Since launch, we've received a lot of valuable feedback concerning the fishing minigame. Um, players have reported being unable to catch fish or confusion regarding the fishing controls. We understand where you're coming from. These guys are so open to uh, feedback. It's insane. I love this. So let's talk, uh, let's talk about the new fishing improvements. The new fishing minigame is a battle between your stamina and the fish's energy. The tension on the fishing line was displayed in the center of the screen. Let's reel in the fish as much as possible while keeping the fishing line from snapping. When the fish runs out of energy, you have successfully caught it. Oh. Okay. Some small fish can now be used as bait. That makes sense. Large and ferocious fish prefer small fish to common bait. That makes sense. Optimize the fish types, reducing the waiting time required for fishing or reeling in a fish. That's cool. And a bunch of new fish. This is nice. Optimize fish, fish tanks to allow them to hold multiple fish at once. Each fish tank can hold up to eight fish depending on the size of the fish. That's cool. I like that. I like this a lot. Two really good quality of life things. I think fishing was kind of, for me, it was kind of like it would half work. And other times it would work. And you're just like, oh, this is cool. And then other times you'd hook a fish and it would go immediately, like turbo speed out of your your little fishing area. And it it would still catch the fish. And you're like, what's happening? Or other times it would snap. So like it was kind of inconsistent. Is there cat fishing? <laughs> Asking for a friend. For my hot friend. <laughs> oh, my God. oh my god. New wilderness game modes. Sproutlet Conquest. Exclusive to Evolution's Call. So this is a PvP server thing only. Opening time every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 4.20. Oh, dude. 4.20? Let's go, brother. Locations, a random settlement in Chalk Peak, Lone Wolf, Wastes, and Blackheart region. All right. Rules. The game mode lasts for 20 minutes. Sproutlet will uh, spawn around uh, five minutes after the event starts to be obtained. Okay. That isn't the event. It'll be PvP, PvP teams. Oh, it's teams. Okay. During the event, the more sprout, Sproutlets you carry, the more Sproutlet. 
It is Sproutlethite. So what's the difference between Sproutlethites and Sproutlets? Maybe... I don't know. Um, you'll drop when you're... Oh, wow. This will be fun. PvP team event. More Sproutlets. Metas can exchange... Uh, med medis Did I say medicine? Metas can exchange Sproutlethites for Sproutlets to a one one to one conversion rate with Nissa in the camp. Okay. PvP group PvP stuff. They're both the same. What the heck? What's the exchange then? <laughs> All right. It's cool. That's fine. It's fine. Um, Ancient Ones Trail. Now, this is the thing I've been talking about. It's like Airbus, what was it? A380? A giant, or like a, you know, it's two decker, so it's an A380. It's a giant plane. This is the thing I've been seeing, and I'm like, where is this thing? Ancient Ones Trail. People have reported seeing an Ancient One descend upon the highest mountain in Chalk Peak. The Ancient One's trial awaits any meta who climbs to the top of that tall mountain. Board the Ancient One and face a trial that will test your determination and courage. Metas who earn the Ancient One's recognition shall receive lots of rewards. Call upon your most trustworthy companions and attempt the Ancient One's trial together. This is sick. I want to do this. Oh, dude, we're not... Today's Wednesday. Oh, man. Lots of rewards. 200 acid. Yeah, I, I would like for them to give skins for events and silos and raids and stuff like LEA. We want skins we can unlock. More skins, please. Along with mods, along with, you know, acid's great. Energy link, all that stuff. But like permanency for skins would be great. More skins. But this is really cool. I've been waiting for this to... Oh, those are hands, dude. Look at all these hands for the mouth. This is cool. I like this. I'm excited about this. Um, mod conversion. We've been talking about this a little bit. Mod conversion is unlocked when you reach level 40 in novice season or when you enter a non-novice season. The mod conversion function can be accessed from the upper right corner of the mod backpack. You can convert six unenhanced legendary mods into a legendary mod with main, uh, with a main attribute of their choice. Mods obtained via conversion may contain basic suffix suffixes, uh, none violent precision or deviant energy. I don't know if I've seen a deviant energy suffix. Eh. If four of the six mods used in the conversion contain the same suffix, the converted mod is guaranteed to have that suffix. So just Stockpile all your mods. This is assuming that the converted mod will be able to have the suffix. For example, Lucky 7 cannot have the precision suffix and the Embers cannot have the Frost Vortex suffix. Makes sense. The converted mod's attribute levels depend on the attribute levels of the six mods used for the conversion. Awesome. This is cool. This is just more functional functionality for mods. Uh, instead of just grinding away mindlessly and never getting the mod that you're looking for, especially if it's got a deep, um, like, loot table wherever you're trying to loot. So, this is really cool. Uh, controller support! We like that. Controller support? Uh, no. Wrong button. Yay. This is what we want. Uh, now if you have, like, an ROG ally or, like, a Steam Deck, or if you just want to play on your controller, there you go. I meant this. And, th and they did say the timetable for this was this time. So they hit their mark when they were like, controller sport, mid-August. And here it is. So this is cool. You'll be able to automatically uh, detect the button layout. Currently, Xbox, PlayStation, and Pro uh, Switch Pro controller layouts are available. Wow, this is... That's interesting. Switch Pro controller, huh? If the controller is not currently recognized by the game, please report your controller's model and preferred... Uh, I maybe just ate my words. Maybe the ROG ally and the Steam Deck may, may not be recognized because these are the three. Interesting. Okay, well, I can try it after the patch and see what happens. Hope someone clipped that. That's true. It's the middest of August. Yeah, it couldn't be any more middle. I mean, it could by a day or two, but, you know. Um, 
default left-handed shooter action so there's def there's like different presets you can have for your controller scheme uh camera modes so controller support which is great cross character sharing for paid content i read this and i was like i kind of confused how this is going to work there's like something you have to log into but Cross-character sharing for paid content now officially available. Paid cosmetics and premium currencies such as... I think this is saying Christian. Is there any other way to say this? Wow, the, the font is small. Oh, whoopsies. There we go. Christian. That's how I've been saying that. Uh, can be shared by all characters under the same account in the same region. For more information, refer to the Once Human Cross-Character Sharing Rules announcement in our official website. Um, server invitations. So this is interesting. I've re I kind of grazed this. Special invitation codes are now available. If a if a server is full, players already on a, players already on the server can find their special invitation code on their player info screen, which can be accessed via the menu. They can then share the special invitation code with their friends. Friends who receive the special invitation code can use it to enter the server, even if it, if it's already full. Um, and it says, note, as servers have restricted capacity, there is still a limit to the number of players who can join each server using um, can join each server using the special invitation codes. Even if they have a code. So there's maybe like a buffer amount of people that you can add, and then maybe they have like a buffer just for special invitations, and then once that's met and it's like full, full, it's gone. So, interesting. Um, seasons. Some servers will be changing seasons for the first time. Me! Us. Uh, our server's definitely about to do that. The following is some useful information regarding once human season system. Um, it's explaining what a scenario is. In September and October, we're bringing in special events featuring new scenario content. September scenario will involve faction based pvp while october will bring a cooperative pve scenario with a new map i wonder if that means our server won't go to this new scenario right now until october uh oh we're gonna find out um temperature based survival mechanics that's interesting like if you're cold hot is what i'm assuming um, also in the works are a scenario with unrestricted PvP and a longer season cycle, as well as a perpetual scenario. So the people that were asking for a permanent server with no wipes or anything, there you go. It's right there. Uh, furthermore, we plan to release at least four new scenarios every year. That's pretty cool. So quarterly scenarios per year. That's Pretty good support right there. Seasons refer to an individual cycle, cycles and progression within a scenario. Um, the duration of each season varies according to the scenario. Each season will also be split into multiple phases. We already know this based on the scenario's features. Um, it's progressively unlocked as the server progresses. We know that. We've experienced that. Um, if you choose to... Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Of course, if you, you can also choose to continue playing and completing objectives on your current server until the seasonal transitional phase ends. Um, transitional phase is set to four weeks. So phase six is four weeks. That's our vision for the game, which uh, we hope will bring you multifaceted and consistently engaging experience. So four weeks for phase six. How do you sign up for a new scenario? You can sign up for a new scenario during the final phase of the uh, current scenario. Uh, once you do so, you can start your journey right away. Alternatively, you can may, uh, may choose to not sign up immediately and continue exploring and fighting on your current server for up to four more weeks, during which you can sign up for a new scenario at any time. If you haven't deci uh, decided on a new scenario to join, by the time the server's final phase ends, your current server will be closed and your character will be returned to Eternal Land where you can continue playing or sign up for a new scenario at any time. Choose a scenario, create a character, play the scenario, sign up for a new scenario. 
uh, in the later phase for the current season to sign up for a new scenario, play the new server. So here's kind of the, the flow chart if you're more of a visual person right here. When a scenario is over, uh, does that mean I will lose my in-game progress? No, it does not. We value your effort and your time you put into our game. Even when the scenario ends or you exit a scenario midway, you'll be able to keep the rewards you've earned. There are a few rare exceptions, including scenario-specific items or memetics items. However, to ensure that each scenario offers a self-sufficient experience and to allow all players to enjoy the game regardless of their progression, we have the following rules in place detailed. We already went over this. Uh, shout out to Nathan for putting these two charts in the Discord. Yep, you can go over this. It's in our Discord. Um, if you need our Discord information, I will put it in chat right now. And seeing how this will be a video tomorrow, it'll be in the info section. Check it out. Um, how do I bring items from the Eternal Land Depot into a new scenario? Uh, you will have a certain amount of resource points when entering a new scenario. Each item you choose to bring into the new scenario will cost a certain amount of resource points. The actual amount required varies between items and can be checked in the game. You will obtain new resource points every time you join a new scenario. Season optimizations. In the upcoming season, we are releasing a new scenario with higher difficulty. I'm down. Uh, the scenario will include two combat uh, environments, which each environment containing different cradle override combinations, super anomaly types, and exclusive blueprints, and calibration blueprints. There are also two combat difficulty levels for the scenario, normal and hard. On hard difficulty, Deviant's Dungeons and other challenges will be tougher and also yield more, yield more rewards. You may choose whatever combat difficulty level you prefer. When the season enters its settlement phase, your personal territory and your vehicle's mobile territory will automatically be saved as house blueprints for the new season. Oh, that's nice. Just in case you're like on vacation or something. Uh, new shop arrivals. This is speaking to me right now. This is speaking to me. I love cosmetics. New cosmetics are coming to Once Human. You can view them in the shop uh, when they're available. The afternoon latte fashion set will be available to purchase after the update. Return to school with this pretty and affordable set. We'll see when the affordable part comes in. New epic hairstyles and rare makeups will be available. You can view them in the cosmetics, hair and makeup. The Teddy Warrior fashion set. This is actually kind of funny. And I think I might buy it. I think I might buy this one. I like it. This versatile warrior fights, heals, and even carries a chilled backpack full of ice cold drinks. And Teddy Partner discount theme pack? What does that mean? I don't know. Oh my! I didn't see this when I scrolled. Lightforge loot crates are now available. Don't even know what those are. Open the Lightforge loot crate to receive a guaranteed cosmetic, as well as a chance to obtain Lightforge collection cosmetics. Oh, they forgot to put a space right there affordable they're not some of them are really expensive like that glass building set very expensive other ones there are affordable ones but they're not super cool in my opinion they don't speak to me i'll say um let's see you will not be uh you will not receive duplicate light forge collection cosmetics that's nice a uh, Lifeforge Collection Cosmetic is guaranteed within 30 openings. Duplicate cosmetics obtained will be converted into tokens that can be used to redeem Lifeforge Loot Crate rewards in Siderite? Or Siderite? 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 Yes. Whatever. The Pyro Glide Vehicle Cosmetic Psychedelic Skull Fashion Set and Primordial Flame Weapon Cosmetic. I didn't realize this was on fire. That's sick. Will be available on August 16th. Open the Lightforge Loot Crate for a chance to get... Oh my gosh, so they're doing loot boxes too, huh? Don't tell me that, dude. Don't tell me about loot boxes, please. I'm not going to do that. I never have any good luck, so I'll probably just avoid that. 
But if they did speak to you, would you speak back? If it's cosmetics, it oh, I will always speak back to cosmetics and caress their beautiful face. Event updates. Wilderness Express. This is the one I'm excited about. Enjoy racing through the wilderness alone or as a team to earn points for mileage and collisions. Uh, reach the required score to claim rewards during, uh, including star crumb and limited edition fulfilled wish vest cosmetic. Eh. Secure on site starts August 22nd during the event. Defeat enemies to learn to earn loot crates. I can't read all of a sudden. Which may contain specimen cards. Collect specimen cards and fill out the field guide to earn rewards. Refer to the event screen for detailed rules. Some uh, Prime War optimizations, which is very needed for this game. Reduce the cooldown timer for Prime War to five minutes. Okay. Recategorize the uh, Prime War's Gatling cannons and turrets for, as special buildings. They no longer use up the same construction limit as other defensive installations. Added new time limits for demolishing buildings and facilities. Why am I why am I putting a question mark on that? In the Prime War, after the time limit is up, buildings may be demolished by a b demolished by other metas. Materials will, will be returned. Oh, okay. Added a new protection mechanism that prevents all buildings from being demolished by other metas once the boss phase begins. This is the problem that I was having other people intentionally failing Prime Wars by destroying everything. I'm glad they addressed that. That's great. Love that. Thank you. Um, That's great. I love that. Got a hair hitting me right in the eye. Yay, gambling! Yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm not. I don't have good enough uh, luck for that. For that to be a thing for me. Territory purification. Reduced uh, deviant HP and damage they deal to buildings in base defense modes, which is, okay. Interesting. Optimize the territory purification tutorial task. Anti-memetics tech. Uh, metas must now reach the easiest territory purification level before taking on this task. Okay. Okay. Um, other adjustments. Slightly increase the length of high-level cargo conquest matches. Opie dopey. If a meta is defeated while carrying a chaotic cortex or a chaotic... Oh, sorry. I don't know where I was reading. Chaotic cortex. The chaotic cortex will no longer drop as stardust flowers. But is a co uh, chaotic cortex. Okay. Guess that was just kind of bug. I don't know. Territory construction optimizations. Construction mode... As a grid alignment system that displays a grid map in your territory. That's chef's kiss right there. I love that. This grid alignment is going to help me line things up. Grid alignment mode allows you to place foundations and facilities on the foundation or floor more neatly. The rotation angle is fixed at 45 degrees. While, uh, while in grid alignment mode, foundations can be raised or lowered by half a wall's height. While in grid alignment mode. Nice. Good change. Love that. You can disable grid alignment mode uh, to return to default freeform construction mode. That's great. Great addition. Love that. That is... I absolutely love that. When the season enters its settlement phase, your personal territory and your vehicle's mobile territory... Yeah, we already kind of read that one. House blueprints can now be... Uh, can now save wallpapers and building cosmetics. When Oh, that's great. When pre previewing the house blueprint, you can now filter the visibility of facilities, wallpaper, and other content. That's cool. Okay. Facilities such as brewing barrels and fuel refineries now display the correct input to output ratio. Nice. You can now easily disconnect electrical wires and water pipes from wire slash pipe. And oh, the management uh, screen. That kind of got fixed. Let's go. Your backpack will now become invisible when interacting with certain... Furniture items? Oh, when you're like sitting down on stuff. I was like, what does that mean? Okay. So it just kind of pops off your character. That's nice. All right. When crafting gear, materials for semi finished items will now be automatically added if you have the required quantities. Okay. Deviant optimizations. 
Um, we'll be facing a new challenge, the Super Anomaly, due to perpetual exposure to... Oh, boy. The kind of they gain new powers, extreme resilience. Luckily, they also come with a new weakness. Exploit these vulnerabilities and defeat them to earn rewards. Deviants. Super anomalies, huh? So they're just world... They're not world bosses, are they? Location, larger strongholds in hard and pro dungeons. Super anomaly types. Void, uh, phase, balance, and coherence. Eh? Countermeasures. Specific types of damage or abilities obtained from the cradle. Are they like... Super anomalies, huh? They're their own thing? Just like a mini boss? That's kind of how I'm interpreting it. Yeah. Counter or read, read the countermeasures. My gosh. Slightly increase the HP of low to mid deviants in the novice season. Uh, deviants in the novice season now pose a larger threat and deal more damage. Oh boy, great ones. They're no longer considered deviants and cannot be affected by damage bonuses that apply to deviants. Instead, they'll be only affected by great ones, which I thought this was already the case, but I guess not. Optimize the blast radius and radius and warning indicator of vulture bombers. That's nice. Improve the alertness and attack logic of <laughs> maniacs and gnars. Yeah, because they gnars would just freeze. Sometimes if you're running in circles, they'll just stop doing what they're doing. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit more difficult. They're smarter, which that's good. Uh, fix an issue where deviant corpses would still have hitboxes. I ran into that problem, causing them to obstruct players' shots. Yup, good fix. Love that. Um, combat optimizations, balance adjustments. We know some of the yeah, issues. Yep, yep. Different builds have different cradle trigger conditions, especially in PvP. So we've adjusted the difficulty of triggering certain cradles to ensure more balanced gameplay across different builds. Deadly combo. So they just did a bunch of tweaks to a lot of things before hitting the weak spot. Oh, deadly combo got changed. Now triggering bullet effects, bounce and shrapnel, bullet effect damage is 25% for four seconds. Transient impact before after triggering a power surge. Power surge damage is increased by 25. Uh, so now after it's after defeating an enemy, the power surge is 25% and shock damage by 18 for 15 cents. Oh, cents. Seconds. Um, interesting. Okay. My sins have been forgiven. <laughs> the current PvP scenarios have been overly powerful. Yeah, prolonged knockdown times negatively impact PvP experiences. Thus, we've adjusted the cradle's damage reduction stats accordingly. Agility. Yeah. After rolling damage reductions for uh, 15 seconds for four, 15 percent for four seconds after, uh, after rolling, weapon damage is increase. A uh, reduction is increased by 15 percent, and damage status damage reduction by 15 for four seconds. So, okay. So you get, oh, okay. That's a decent balance. We'll see if these help for PvP people. Oh boy, my boots got nerfed. Old Huntsman boots are uh, designed to simply simplify player controls, but these boots were too powerful in PvP, so we've slightly reduced the effectiveness in PvP. Oh, good. We're not doing that too much. We're doing a little bit of PvP. After, uh, before. After triggering the bullseye, the next one bullet will count as a weak spot even when the doesn't hit a weak spot. Yes. Now it's... It has to be on a marked target now. Instead of just anything. Which is... I feel like how I was using it anyway when I was firing at stuff with these boots. So... Nothing literally changed for how I was using these boots. Um, some deviation passives are either too strong or too weak, so we've made the following adjustments. I'm getting tired of reading. <laughs> There's so many patch notes. Lots of balances uh, for Psychic Kid, Health, and Run Fast. 
Uh, melee weapon balance adjustments. Certain melee weapons like the Scourge and Long Axe are too powerful. Okay. Durability issues. Also, some batons takes up too... Also, the Sun Baton startup takes too long, so we've increased the base chance of triggering Power Surge and optimized its description. Okay, so... Wow. Sun Baton got a little bit... buffed? This is a lot of changes for... pretty much all the melee weapons. Long Axe got changed. I'm just going to leave them up so you guys can read them. My brain is fried from reading too much already. A lot of PvP imbalance are being addressed for sure because it seems like... And I watched a Doombringer build with that fucking shotgun and... That thing was broken. Like, I rolled the wrong bullseye build. I should have done... Bingo, the sniper rifle, and then Doom Doombringer. Because that thing was shredding. That thing's doing... Uh, Tens of thousands of damage per shot. As a shotgun. I watched a guy solo LEA. No problem. With that shotgun. And that's all he used was the shotgun. He was just shredding everything. I was so impressed. I was like, wow, this thing is literally broken right now. Uh, recurve bows getting adjustments. Compound bows getting adjustments. That's a lot. A lot of good stuff. You've seen it do 400k a shot. <clears throat> yeah, that's crazy. Oh, there, here it is. As a double-barreled shotgun, Doombringer is designed for close combat, but its ability to mark targets with bullseye from afar is too prominent. We've lowered the probability of <laughs> making targets, of marking, geez, marking targets at long range while offering more rewards for close combat. Before, this thing straight up 65% uh, uh, to trigger bullseye on a, on a hit. Uh, with a shotgun, no matter the range. Now it's 30% chance to trigger bullseye on hit, 80% chance within 5 meters. So it's a good good balance. This is tomorrow. So at 9pm uh, today, the server is going down for 5 hours. 5 hours. Downtime. Um, since great ones are no longer deviants, we've adjusted the effect of de deviation handling in novice season cradle to better focus on critical targets. Ink, yeah, tr tr critical targets. Jeez. Um, I think this is a decent trade-off. A shotgun shouldn't be doing what it was doing. It was a very insane shotgun. Now it's thirty percent on, regardless of where uh, where you're hitting a target, and then when they're in five meters, you're pretty much guaranteed targeting, getting marking, uh, with hitting anything within five meters. I think this is a good trade-off. I still will probably do uh, Doombringer Bingo Bullseye build next season because this 80% is up from 65. And there's always something on my ass when I'm, run when I'm running this, the Bingo Sniper. Always. So I can switch, bop, 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 and then switch to far and start, you know, so I'll have long range, short range covered, just crazy. <clears throat> Let's do it. Everyone run Bingo Doombringer next season. I think this is a good... I personally think this is a good change for Doombringer. Because uh, I, after watching people run that thing, I watched like three or four videos last night, and Doombringer was shredding things, and it shouldn't have been doing... It should have no business doing what it was doing. It was nuts. I was like, this thing is literally broken. Crazy. I full of Doombringers. Let's do it. Um, also, with test dummies being uh, deviant units, the deviation handling adjustment will reduce damage output on wooden stakes when deviation... Uh, okay, not really sure what that means. Oh, this is just dummy build stuff. Okay. Battle stat, bug fixes. Squidward. Squidward. Squidward? Is that a, <laughs> is that a weapon? Eh? Fixed uh, an issue where Doyen's cloak applied double damage bonuses. <gasps> After its frozen effects ended. Whoa. Fix some uh, stats where purple mods, obliterate, super bullet, soul reap, and blaze blessing. Stat errors. Okay. 
uh, fixed an issue where the portable territory wasn't functioning properly. What does that even mean? A tentacle whip? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I've never seen this. I mean, I guess I'm not really paying attention to all the weapons. I was very much had my blinders on for the bingo um, marking build. Um, fix an inc incorrect duration of the tracking bullet buff. A lot of, a lot of changes. A lot of changes. New additions. What the heck? Introduce multiple new calibration blueprint categories, which will be available in Season 2. These include frugal style. Suits. Pistols. Suits pistols and sniper rifles, allowing the ammo recovery from missed shots. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Vanguard style. Suits SMGs, rifles, and light machine guns. Capable of stabilizing keyword effects obtained by disassembling. Okay. Boost style. Suits pistols and shotguns. Capable of increasing keyword trigger probability through reloading. You have a fast reload for a shotgun. You, that boost style is going to be kind of nuts. Overflow style. Suits pistols and light machine guns. Allowing for overloading magazines based on shooting frequency. Energy style. Suits SMGs and rifles. Allowing for ammo recovery after being hit. Oh. Okay. Added two mod suffixes. Resonance. Increased sustained damage output when dealing weak spot. Crit and elemental damage. Oh, it's, for, it's from Prime War. Battle suffix. I already did that. Adjusted for uh, acquisition method for keyword suffix. You know, some of these words are together and I'm reading them and I'm like, I don't know what that means. And uh, yeah, developer notes, deviation optimizations and adjustments. They fix a dummy issue with deviations. Uh, optimize the animation and visual effects of Xeno purifier action. Optimize the uh, Digby logging beaver interaction. Oh, with the facilities. Okay. I had a new interaction with Rebecca. Okay. Introduce new traits for deviations in season two. The following deviations now have a chance to gain new traits. <gasps> the cat, Digby, grow shroom, fetch a lot bunny, butterflies emissary, festering gel. Okay. Nice. Significantly increase the uh, deviation resource production efficiency of H37. And added gunpowder to, to its obtainable item list. That's pretty good. Deviations in the territory will now continuously produce resources at gathering uh, platforms. Uh, they kind of already do. Interesting. Gathering progress at platform facilities is saved when deviations stop working due to the lack of deviant power. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Reduce deviations PvP damage factor. Yeah, that jellyfish was kind of nuts in PvP. Survival optimizations. Added an auto flashlight feature. That's cool. Uh, dish formulas gained from recipes picked up in the wilderness will now carry over across seasons. Yay. Characters under certain level conditions that uh, reduce movement speed, like low hydration or mild fractures, can now sprint at reduced speed. Oh, okay. That's... Okay. That's whatever. Guidance optimizations. Make it clear for players to go about tasks. A new guide feature has been added. When players approach an objective, Mitsuko will appear to guide the player. This feature can be turned off. Okay. Improve the interaction experience for Rift Anchor related gameplay. Okie doke. That's nice. I mean, that's nice. Map optimizations. Optimized map navigations of players are now guided to the entrance of the mo uh, monolith danger zone when tracking the monolith, rather than the closest road to the monolith. Okie doke. Vehicle optimizations. Fix an issue where vehicle territories weren't correctly accounted for during season settlement. Camera reset logic. Camera effects. Players now dismiss vehicles. Not owned for them. Oh, buy, uh, buy them in their territory. So if someone parks something in their territory, they can just dismiss it, which is nice. Because I, I can imagine people were griefing at some point and just like parking things in front of people's doors and stuff. That's nice. 
Um, do 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 do. Optimize the convenience of neutral stronghold shops. Change the interaction key for whispers to H. This is huge, and this is exactly what I said they should switch it to. Instead of just having it as F as the normal key, it should be H when you're trying to check a whisper. And they, they did exactly that. Thank you. Because I want to keep whispers on because some of them are helpful. But if I'm hitting F and there's something I need to interact with, I kept opening whispers up. This is huge for me personally because I kept opening whispers. I like that. Thank you. Appreciate that. Some social function optimizations. You guys can read that. I am running out of steam of talking. My fucking voice box is just getting shredded right now. Reading? Never heard of it. Uh, boss dungeon silo optimization. Slightly reduce the difficulty of the, the, the spider dungeon, huh? Interesting. Optimize the audio effects in the empty house silo uh, concert. Kind of securement silo. Jesus. Uh, sigh and uh, reduce the empty house stats on normal difficulty. Okay. Eternal land optimizations. There's so much in this patch, guys. 1.1, very big patch. I'm assuming just, you know, if you're thinking about maybe taking off a of work or whatever, just don't. I can see problems. There's so many, so many changes happening. I... There's only going to be issues when they update. So just don't do it. You know, they might have to emergency patch something. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. This is great, but, you know, this is a, there's a lot of changes happening at one time. Um, developer notes, other optimizations, increase the scan range of space time again. Wow, okay. Lots of bug fixes. Tons of bug fixes. 28 other bug fixes. Huge patch. Love this. It's all on their... Um, you can find it on the Steam page. You can find it on their website. You can find some of this information in our Discord. If you want to figure it out or, you know, for yourself, it's all there for you to take a gander. We kind of summarized the later half because it was just... It was getting tedious to read all that. But this is good and this is fun. I like this. I'm very excited for this. The Ancient Ones trial. I'm I'm down for sure. So yeah. Hope you enjoyed that. And uh if you're watching this in the in the old in the old video form, we're live Sunday through Wednesday, playing a lot of once human. Obviously hit the like button and then hit the subscribe button. Come on. It's free. We like free. You like free. I like free. We can be free together. Can't wait for tomorrow. Um, is it raining over by you, Nathan? This is cool. 1.1. Awesome. Let's, uh, let's jump back to the bunker. That's going to be a YouTube video if you miss any of that tomorrow. I'll clip that out. That was like 30, that was, that was like 45 minutes of just talking.